1844 Discourse, Resurrection of the Dead by Joseph Smith History Volume F1. History, 1838-1856, Volume F1. May 1, 1844 to August 8, 1844. May 12, 1844 Sunday at 10 a.m., I preached at the stand, the following brief synopsis of my discourse was reported by my clerk, Thomas Bullock. The Savior has the words of eternal life, nothing else can profit us, there is no salvation in believing an evil report against our neighbor. I advise all to go on to perfection, and search deeper and deeper into the mysteries of godliness. A man can do nothing for himself unless God direct him in the right way, and the priesthood is revealed for that purpose. The last time I spoke on this stand it was on the resurrection of the dead, when I promised to continue my remarks upon that subject, I still feel a desire to say something on this subject. Let us this very day begin anew, and now say, with all our hearts, we will forsake our sins and be righteous. I shall read the twenty-fourth chapter of Matthew, and give it a literal rendering and reading, and when it is rightly understood it will be edifying. He then read and translated it from the German. I thought the very oddity of its rendering would be edifying anyhow. And it will preached be, the gospel of the kingdom in the whole world, to a witness over all people, and then will the end come. I will now read it in German. Which he did, and many Germans who were present said he translated it correctly. The Savior said, when those tribulations should take place, it should be committed to a man, who should be a witness over the whole world. The keys of knowledge, power, and revelations, should be revealed to a witness who should hold the testimony to the world. It has always been my province to dig up hidden mysteries, new things, for my hearers. Just at the time when some men think that I have no right to the keys of the priesthood, just at that time I have the greatest right. The Germans are an exalted people. The old German translators are the most correct, most honest of any of the translators. And therefore I get testimony to bear me out in the revelations that I have preached for the last fourteen years. The old German, Latin, Greek, and Hebrew translations all say it is true, they cannot be impeached, and therefore I am in good company. All the testimony is, that the Lord in the last days would commit the keys of the priesthood to a witness over all people. Has the gospel of the kingdom commenced in the last days? And will God take it from the man until he takes him himself? I have read it precisely as the words flowed from the lips of Jesus Christ. John the Revelator saw an angel flying through the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. The scripture is ready to be fulfilled when great wars, famines, pestilence, great distress, judgments etc., are ready to be poured out on the inhabitants of the earth. John saw the angel having the holy priesthood who should preach the everlasting gospel to all nations. God had an angel, a special messenger, ordained and prepared for that purpose in the last days. Woe! Woe! Be to that man or set of men, who lift up their hands against God and his witness in these last days, for they shall deceive almost the very chosen ones. My enemies say that I have been a true prophet, why I had rather be a fallen true prophet than a false prophet. When a man goes about prophesying and commands men to obey his teachings, he must be either a true or false prophet. False prophets always arise to oppose the true prophets, and they will prophesy so very near the truth that they will deceive almost the very chosen ones. The doctrine of eternal judgments belongs to the first principles of the gospel in the last days. In relation to the kingdom of God, the devil always sets up his kingdom at the very same time in opposition to God. Every man who has a calling to minister to the inhabitants of the world, was ordained to that very purpose in the grand council of heaven before this world was. I suppose that I was ordained to this very office in that grand council. It is the testimony that I want that I am God's servant, and this people his people. The ancient prophets declared in the last days the God of heaven should set up a kingdom, which should never be destroyed, nor left to other people. And the very time that was calculated on, this people were struggling to bring it out. He that arms himself with gun, sword, or pistol, except in the defense of truth, will some time be sorry for it. I never carry any weapon with me bigger than my penknife, when I was dragged before the cannon and muskets in Missouri, I was unarmed. God will always protect me until my mission is fulfilled. I calculate to be one of the instruments of setting up the kingdom of Daniel by the word of the Lord, and I intend to lay a foundation that will revolutionize the whole world. I once offered my life to the Missouri mob as a sacrifice for my people, and here I am. 
It will not be by sword or gun that this kingdom will roll on, the power of truth is such that all nations will be under the necessity of obeying the gospel. The prediction is that army will be against army. It may be that the saints will have to beat their plows into swords, for it will not do for men to sit down and see their women and children destroyed patiently. My text is on the resurrection of the dead, which you will find in the fourteenth chapter of John. In my father's house are many mansions. It should be, in my father's kingdom are many kingdoms, in order that ye may be heirs of God and joint heirs with me. I do not believe the Methodist doctrine of sending honest men, and noble-minded men to hell, along with the murderer and adulterer. They may hurl all their hell and fiery billows upon me, for they will roll off me as fast as they come on. But I have an order of things to save the poor fellows at any rate, and get them saved, for I will send men to preach to them in prison, and save them if I can. There are mansions for those who obey a celestial law, and there are other mansions for those who come short of that law, every man in his own order. There is baptism etc. for those to exercise who are alive, and baptism for the dead who died without the knowledge of the gospel. I am going on in my progress for eternal life. It is not only necessary that you should be baptized for your dead, but you will have to go through all the ordinances for them, same as you have gone through to save yourselves. There will be 144,000 saviors on Mount Zion, and with them an innumerable host, that no man can number. Oh! I beseech you to go forward, and make your calling and your election sure. And if any man preach any other gospel than that which I have preached, he shall be cursed, and some of you who now hear me shall see it, and know that I testify the truth concerning them. In regard to the law of the priesthood, there should be a place where all nations shall come up from time to time to receive their endowments. And the Lord has said, This shall be the place for the baptism for the dead. Every man that has been baptized and belongs to the kingdom, has a right to be baptized for those who are gone before. And, as soon as the law of the gospel is obeyed here by their friends who act as proxy for them, the Lord has administrators there to set them free. A man may act as proxy for his own relatives. The ordinances of the gospel which were laid out before the foundation of the world, have been thus fulfilled by them, and we may be baptized for those whom we have much friendship for. But it must be first revealed to the man of God lest we should run too far. As in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive, all shall be raised from the dead. The Lamb of God hath brought to pass the resurrection, so that all shall rise from the dead. God Almighty Himself dwells in eternal fire, flesh and blood cannot go there, for all corruption is devoured by the fire. Our God is a consuming fire. When our flesh is quickened by the Spirit, there will be no blood in the tabernacle. Some dwell in higher glory than others. Those who have done wrong always have that wrong gnawing them. Immortality dwells in everlasting burnings. I will from time to time reveal to you the subjects that are revealed by the Holy Ghost to me. All the lies that are now hatched up against me are of the devil, and all the influence of the devil and his servants will be used against the kingdom of God. The servants of God teach nothing but the principles of eternal life, by their works ye shall know them. A good man will speak good things and holy principles, and an evil man evil things. I feel in the name of the Lord to rebuke all such bad principles, liars etc., and I warn all of you to look out who you are going after. I exhort you to give heed to all the virtue and the teachings which I have given you. All men who are immortal dwell in everlasting burnings. You cannot go anywhere but where God can find you out. All men are born to die and all men must rise, all must enter eternity. In order for you to receive your children to yourself, you must have a promise, some ordinance, some blessing, in order to ascend above principalities, or else it may be an angel. They must rise just as they died, we can then hail our lovely infants with the same glory, the same loveliness in the celestial glory where they all enjoy alike. They differ in stature, in size, the same glorious spirit gives them the likeness of glory and bloom, the old man with his silvery hairs will glory in bloom and beauty. No man can describe it to you, no man can write it. When did I ever teach anything wrong from this stand? When was I ever confounded? I want to triumph in Israel before I depart hence and am no more seen. I never told you I was perfect, but there is no error in the revelations which I have taught, must I then be thrown away as a thing of naught? I enjoin for your consideration, add to your faith virtue, love etc. I say in the name of the Lord, if these things are in you, you shall be fruitful. I testify that no man has power to reveal it but myself, things in heaven, in earth, and hell, 
and all shut your mouths for the future. I commend you all to God, that you may inherit all things, and may God add his blessing. Amen.